on Facebook. It's Bernina Canada coming to you live from the basement still. Yes, still in the basement. So I'm just waiting to see if this comes up in my feed and I'm waiting for a couple of you to join. Today's topic is coaching and not just potato coaching, not just surfing the couch. There I am. All right. Join on me. All right. So if you have any questions about couching, today's the day to answer it. Ask it. I'm going to answer it. You don't have to answer it. I'll answer it. How about that? All right. Well, as I was saying, today is um, April, sorry, May 7th. We're still in the basement. It's a beautiful day in Ontario. It's cold. It's rainy. It's overcast. And that means one thing. Can't go outside. Good day for sewing. So today we're going to talk about one of my favorite embellishment techniques called couching and um, you may or may not be familiar with it. I have at least seven different ways that you can couch today. So hopefully I'll get some of you inspired to try this amazing historical um, technique. So I don't see any comments. I'm just fixing my screen so I can see the comments. Oh, Shelly's here. Kathy's here. That's great. Okay. Oh, Shelly, it's 97 where you are. Okay, good. Put some sunscreen on or just stay inside. Stay safe. Okay, good. So couching, um, if you don't know what couching is, it's an old technique um, using fibers that are often too delicate, too large, too precious to go through a needle. And those fibers are laid onto a ground fabric and they're secured with other fibers threads to hold them in place. Those uh, securing stitches might be visible, they might be invisible, depends on the look you're trying to achieve. If they're invisible, it kind of looks like the cords are floating on top. And if you do a visible technique, you can get uh, secondary patterns. So couching is a really exciting technique because it affords for a lot of creativity and a lot of variability in um, the effects that we can, that we can achieve. Um, Historically, we would have seen um, metal threads being used, <laughs> excuse me, in court um, garments um, or special garments for like the clergy, things like that, all over the world. Japan, Asia, Middle East, um, Europe, we see all kinds of those things. In fact, I was on a trip uh, last year almost this time with Chantel and Janice and all my friends. Um, we were in England and at the Victorian Albert Museum, we saw a great example of couching from 1065. And um, so I'm just saying this technique has been around for a long time. Traditionally, it's been done by hand, but as you know, today I'm going to show you how to do a couple of these with your sewing machine. So with further, uh, without further ado, I'm really excited. Remember, I just had a sugary drink. Maybe shouldn't have done that. Um, I'm going to turn to the machine and we're going to look at some of the items you can use for couching on your sewing machine. All right, here we go. So you can use simple everyday items, things you may already have in your house. Um, this is number three pearl cotton that we use a lot for pin tucks. Um, or this is DMC floss that I've been using since I'm six years old, couching and doing or, um, candle wicking and all of that stuff. Um, hi Lucy, I see your question. I will get back to you on that. Hey Carol, good to see you. So you can use something simple like that, some cotton flosses. Um, the other thing I really like to use are those decorative th threads we bought at all the creative festivals, the quilt shows and stuff like this. So this is one of my favorite companies, Wonderfill. That's a Canadian company and they make some really beautiful decorative threads that are too thick really to go through the needle. It just won't make a great stitch. So this is eight weight. Um, dazzle, I have some Razzle, which is also eight thread, eight weight, and it's just, it can't go through the needle. We could use it in bobbin work, but we can also use it for couching. Many, many, many of our Bernina stores carry wonderful products. Um, I know that um, my sewing room has it, and Higglet Fabric, she has a great selection of them. Look them up, I think some of them have put them on sale this week because we they know we're doing this presentation. So definitely check out the Wonderfell threads, some of my favorites. You can also use cording. You can use something thick like that. This is one we use at Bernina a lot to demonstrate couching. This is um, this is called La Espiga by um, Helos. 
And you can get this at Creek Bank. I've got it at my sewing room. I've gotten it all around town. You can get it just about anywhere. It's very nicely tightly woven and it fits exactly in uh, some of the grooves that we have in our feet. And I'll show you that as we go along. Um, there's also like rat tail cording you can get. Sorry about that, Sarah. There you go. So rat tail sort of smooth cording or you can get sort of the bumpy twisted kind. Doesn't really matter. They all work real great. And of course, yarns. Yarns are some of the most popular things to couch. Um, all kinds of different thicknesses. This is one I really like, works well for me. Here's one I just got from the yarn guy in Toronto and I really wanna try this one. Um, I've used a lot of sort of sport weight yarn. That's a nice one. And you can go really thick. We're gonna use this one today. This one reminds me of Tickle Me Elmo. And you can go variegated. You can go all kinds of things to try couching with. Um, it's really good, fun to experiment with things left over from your knitting and crochet projects. All right, so those are the main type of things that you can couch with. And I do wanna mention that, you know, I never really start with, stay with the normal stuff. I also try some weird stuff. You can also try ribbons and um, other specialty threads. This is a, um, reflective thread that you can add into your knitting projects and I was not very successful in getting this through the needle of my projects it's kind of stretchy and soft but I think this would be a great one to maybe twist with another yarn and use that for couching so we could certainly experiment further with um, non-traditional couching uh, items you know I'm not going to stick to the traditional stuff so yeah so this is silk ribbon for ribbon embroidery and this is some reflective item. I think I got that from Fabricville in Quebec. All right, so now we'll turn to the machine and we'll start some couching. I'll show you some of the feet you can use in couching. And remember, I told you I'm gonna show you seven types of couching today. So we're gonna start first with simple couching. And I really enjoy using the number 23 foot for this. Woohoo, it's a slippery foot. It's got little toes. It's usually used for applique, but it's got this amazing groove on the bottom that allows perfectly for a two millimeter cord to fit in there. So I'm gonna put this on the machine. I'm gonna get right in Sarah's way because that's what I do. And you can couch just about any cord down with this. Uh, I would, I'm gonna go with this one today. I got this fuzzy one. How cute is that? So you just place it in the channel underneath the foot and I'm going to turn this so I can use a nice part of the quilt. I have two quilts on my lap right now for that I want to show you as for demonstration and they're making me so warm right now. It was a really good choice. All right so I've selected a zigzag stitch just a small zigzag and I'm going to try going over the thread. There we go. You might not see it yet, but I'll turn the project so Sarah can see it. You can change the zigzag. I'm just going to, don't worry about this, Sarah. I'm just going to change it longer. So if you do a short zigzag, you're going to see a lot of the top thread. If you do a long zigzag, you're going to see much less of the top thread. I'll cut it and bring it closer so you can see. Forgot with this machine, I have to lift it up. But you can see how it's couched that down right into the, the quilt top here. Here's where it's kind of uh, narrow and you see a little bit more of the thread and here I spaced it out. You see a little bit more of the cord. So that's pretty cool. Hey Janice, it's good to see you on Chantel's trip. You were with me in England. That was so much fun. Say hi to the hubby. Um, so yeah, definitely you can get different looks. This I've chosen a thread that matches this cord very well, but you could use a contrasting cord and it would give it an entirely different effect, which would be really, really great. Um, so that's number 23. You can use that. You can use a decorative stitch. You could use a straight stitch and just stitch right down the middle of the cord if that was the look that you wanted. That's what's so great about this. It's so flexible. You can try anything. The way that you couch something down and the way I couch something down are certainly not going to be the same. So another way you could simple couch is you could use the number 21 braiding foot. It's got a really um, easy to insert hole there and you can pass braiding cords all kinds of things through there I'm gonna try 
using my doodad that came with my number 43. I'm gonna see if I can pull that. I would suggest threading this off the machine. It's so much more successful. Don't listen to what I, don't do what I do. Do what I say, I don't know, whatever it is. All right. Oh, I'm so excited that all our, the friends from the England trip are doing this together. So this is a much fatter cord and, and it actually is fatter than the hole that I put it in, but because it's yarn, it will compress and I will still get an amazing result or a different, a different look. I'm gonna just widen my stitch just to make sure I catch the yarn. And I gotta put my foot down or it won't sew. These sewing machines, not sewing if I don't put the foot down, crazy. So that's a very um, similar technique you can see there. I'm gonna cut it so you can see. Wee, wee, oh, that's so cool. Look how much I compressed that down. It was really fluffy and fuzzy, and now it's got that great um, defined look. I think that's a really cool look. Um, looks really good if you add it to a table runner, placemat, right in the seam. If you have any wobbly seams, no, you guys all have perfect Bernina seams, I know, but sometimes I wobble, so that helps a lot. So that's basically simple couching. That's technique number one. If you want to take this technique a little farther, and who doesn't, you could use a pin tucking foot. Sorry, sorry. Um, I've got pin tucking foot number 46, and it's usually used to make pin tucks, which are used made with a twin needle, so it's not at all like couching at all. It's a completely different technique, but I'm going to use it to couch because I can. So I'm gonna put another cord down there, and I'm just gonna zigzag over it with, this is just 2.5 wide. And I'm gonna couch over it like that. And the trick with this is to make the first line really, really straight. You could do these all curved, by the way, too. You could definitely go around things, um, try different techniques. So now what I could do is this foot has some channels here and I can run this cord in another channel and now my stitches will be a certain distance apart. And I will tell you that these are 4.5 millimeters apart. How do I know? Extensive training, people, extensive training. No, um, it says so in the big book of feet. <laughs> but um, if you skip a channel, so now I have the first one that I sewed down in the out outermost channel, and now I'm gonna stitch a second cord down in the middle, because I can. Look what happens. I get perfectly couched rows exactly nine millimeters apart. Lovely, they're like fake pin tucks. But that's not all, of course not. You're dealing with Adrian, that's not all. Nine millimeters should sound like a very familiar distance to you. Um, a lot of our machines have nine millimeter stitch with openings. And so now what I can do is I can look like the true professional that I am, and I can put a decorative stitch right in the middle there. I can pick any decorative stitch up to nine millimeters wide. This machine won't stitch more than nine millimeters. So Sarah, I'm gonna to go to the screen and I'm gonna pick a stitch um, in my decorative stitches. I just can't decide what I'm gonna do, Sarah. That's why I'm telling you what I'm doing. Um, should we do a floral? Should we do a, gosh, I'm gonna do a floral. Oh, that one's too big, this one. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna let this rip. And I have to do nothing because the cords are being held in place. Just letting the machine do the work. I'm gonna press pattern end. It'll complete the pattern for me. And I'm gonna pick a different stitch too because I'm ornery that way and I just wanna pick some up. Oh, that's pretty, let's do that. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, that's so cool. I love it. 
love that geometric one and it works with florals too. I bet you I could put my name in there one time or something. That would be fun too. But you see how beautiful it holds it exactly nine millimeters apart. It looks amazing. I even have a sample we did in a class once. I hope Sarah can see it there. Oh, I got my fluff on it too. But see, we did the same thing. And between, we've got the decorative stitches in there. So that's really cool because 46C is really a pin tucking foot, but you can also do all these great decorative techniques and couching as well. So try looking at your feet um, to see what multi-purpose aspects they have to them. All right, so that's simple couching. We're done simple couching. We only have six more techniques to go. I'll go faster, don't worry. All right. Okay, so the second technique is called flat couching and a lot of us have these really cool feet with multiple grooves in them see here it's got a little gateway can you see that Sarah and then when I open it up it's got multiple grooves for cords to sit in and then once you've got the cord in you just close the gate and we have two of them we have one that has just three little grooves and we have another one that has five grooves so cool these are what's really great for that embroidery embroidery floss embroidery floss or the pearl cotton or what i'm going to use today is wonderfill product because i really love wonderfill nice canadian company i'm going to use um one is called razzle and one is called dazzle can't remember which one this is and don't worry about being out of focus it just i've tied a knot in them i've already lost my threader but that's okay I just tied a knot. There we go. Sorry, sorry. So I've opened the gate, tied a knot, and now I'm going to pull the knot underneath the foot. You're going to have to trust me here. There we go. So I've pulled it there, and now I'm going to put them sort of lined up in the grooves. You got that, Sarah? Sort of lined up in the grooves. I'm going to put it on the machine so you can see it even better. All right. My knot is way beyond the foot now. And now Sarah can see that I've got my threads in order. Right, I've got them in order. I'm doing green, purple, green today, just for fun. And then I can close the gate once I have everything in the correct order. Maybe, sorry. So I close the gate, they're all in their little groups. I'm going to check. Nobody wants to play nice today. Hmm. Fine. We'll try it again. We'll do it again. There we go. One, two, three. I know my hand's in the way. I keep trying to do things with the wrong hand. I just don't like them. Gotcha. Thanks. All right. So I've got my little cords in the right spot. And now I can choose um, a stitch. I'm just going to play with this till I get the cords how I like them. All right, so I'm going to choose a stitch. I've already forgotten which one I was going to use. 626, I thought. Uh, what I'm looking for is because I have three threads, I'm looking for a stitch that doesn't meet exactly in the middle. 302 will do. So, because if it goes right in the middle, it's going to split my middle stitch. So I'm going to try this one. You know when you have notes and then you forget your notes? That's how you go. Just being nice one. patience but it's really fun you can also use something as simple as the zigzag the variegated zigzag that kind of goes left and right move my cords you just got to manage these cords I got it
get the idea of how to run this. This is sort of hard to run from the side, I apologize. But you can see how it traps down the stitches and you can use decorative stitches or you can use more utilitarian sort of zigzag stitches. And so that's how you can use your number 22 or 25 to couch down multiples. I hope you'll give it a try. In the Big Book of Feet, there's a lot of great settings on this. And also we have a free ebook called The ABCs of Couching. So try that. I've linked it to our Pinterest page. Um, but if you just Google Bernina ebook couching, it comes right up and it has all the settings for this. All right, and do check if the stores have this really cool razzle and dazzle um, and spaghetti and tooth. They have such great names, the wonderful threads, and they do such a great job with them. So that's flat couching. And Sarah, maybe do you have a second? I have a sample of this. Can you zoom in on this bag? I'll show you. Sorry, do you see that? You got it. So this is almost exactly what we were just doing on this bag. So deck, this was just using that um, zigzag stitch. But you can of course do, I'm gonna flip the bag over. Remember we were doing simple embroidery? Here's simple embroidery, simple couching, excuse me, but using a decorative stitch. And you can see the decorative stitch becomes part of the embellishment. So try um, experimenting with some of the different stitches as well. All right, so we covered a few different um, examples. We're going to move on to narrow cord, narrow cord couching. I'm going to go back to the machine. Oh, yeah. Okay, so some of you might already have a 39C or um, a number six foot. And they have a little hole in the front that can allow for a very narrow cord, a very narrow cord indeed. Um, so double check if you have a number 39 or number six in your um, repertoire. So here's number 39, and I've just flossed through a little bit of that Wonderfill thread. And you can just couch this down around um, appliques, or it looks amazing on like Kate Facet fabric. You can um, sort of pull out some of the details around the flowers. It looks amazing. You can of course go around curves. You can go straight. You can definitely pivot and go around the corners of things. It looks so cool. I'm gonna show you. So see how nice it looks? couch down. See, how it's really awesome. And I can kind of make it, um, I could choose a thread that's a similar color and get more of a monotone effect. But in this case, I've chosen a really high contrast color to just show you the difference. Here, I'll show you on the number six what it looks like if you use a similar color. This is really cool. The number six is a really cool foot. It's got these short little toes. You can get around applique, it works great. So let me show you, if you do it with the same color, it, it kind of looks like a mock um, pin tuck, right? Like, look how cool that is. That would add so much detail to a, like a placemat or um, a quilt border. Garmentry, oh, I forgot to mention that you could definitely put this on garmentry, jean jackets and things like that. So definitely check that out if you have a number six, that little cord, you can use that for um, narrow cord. There's a little hole in the number six and the number 39. Suzanne, I will definitely post the link for the ebook on couching. That's a really good point. I'll put it in the comments for you, okay? All right, so that is narrow cord couching and we're almost at my favorite type, but not quite. Um, you can couch the edge of, um, I have a sample. Here, here's one. You can actually couch along the edge of an item. So this is like a mug rug we did for a Soapalooza. And this edge is just finished with a cord and it's zigzagged over there. And you can do that with a specialty foot, or I'm gonna show you a secret. You can use a foot you might even have already in your collection. So let me show you that. Um, the number 12 and 12 C foot, 
this is what we usually use for this for going over the edge of something. And the reason is there's a secret on the bottom. I'll show you on the bottom of this one. There you go. You might not be able to see it, but this side of the foot is much, much thicker in height than this one. This one is much thinner. And what that happens is that the thinner one is here, almost like a zipper foot. It's a little bit thinner. So this allows for the bulky section of the sewing to be on this side and the other side will engage with the feed dogs. So it's originally designed for bulky overlock. So when you're sewing knit items together, but it's also great for couching because they also incorporated a little hole for a cord. So we can certainly um, use it for couching. I'm going to show you with my one of my favorite yarns. This just reminds me of Tickle Me Elmo. Um, it's so fuzzy and cool. Now, you could use a little flosser to floss it through, but sometimes we may have lost our flosser. Uh, ask me how I know about this. You can make your own flosser by just using a piece of thread. And I've just joined the two ends together. I know I'm driving Sarah crazy because my hand's in the wrong spot. And then if I just use those threads as a flosser, bingo, free flosser. There you go. Price of admission today, you learned how to make your own flosser. Good stuff. All right, so um, because this is built up on one side, we're going to use the edge of this quilt to kind of approximate what we've, what we've got as an edge. So we're going to move over to the edge. All right, so I've got the high edge on the left side and there's nothing on the right side and my cord is in the middle. So this is a folded edge, but this could be a raw edge or this could be an edge that you've just surged or zigzagged over to hold it. And I'm just making the, the zigzag wider to hold it. I just gotta make an adjustment, sorry Sarah. There we go. So now I'm zigzagging the cord right onto the edge. Oh my gosh, this yarn is my favorite yarn. What will I do when I run out of this one? I don't know. All right, I'm gonna show you what this looks like. How great is that? Look, it's just zigzagged on the edge. It makes me so happy. It's so fuzzy, it looks great. Notice I used white thread and it just kind of buried itself in that minky fluffy yarn. And on the back, it looks great too. I used a bobbin thread to match the back and it's a really nice edge. So that's the 12 or 12 C foot. If you don't have that in your repertoire, you could use my favorite foot number 10 and kind of approximate it with number 10. So number 10 has that sort of flange. We can run the flange along the edge of the quilt and just put the yarn on the other side. That seems to work for me when I put the yarn over there. It's kind of hard to do from this angle, Sarah. Oops, I'm gonna lose it. I think I went off. I think I went off course there. Let's see. Yeah, I think I went off course quite a bit. Yeah. So I started out okay and then I just went off course because I'm sitting to the side. It's tricky. But that's another really fun look there. I really love that. interesting fluffy look I really like that okay we'll, we'll experiment more with number 10 that's really cool so that is a couched edge so we've learned a lot of techniques already hey Angie how you doing so we've done that one now we're on to my favorite part of the whole day free motion quilting couching free motion couching so I'm going to show you a sample real quick. Here's one here. Sarah can see that there on the top. Can you get up that high, Sarah? Mm -hmm. There we go. So free motion, meaning no feed dogs. We're going to lower the feed dogs. Everything up to this point, we had the luxury of using the feed dogs to control the threads. And to, to do these techniques, we're going to do it free motion. The advantage is we get to move in any direction we want. The disadvantage is uh, we have to do more work. 
the machine is not doing the work for us. We have to do a bit more work. So let's set this up for free motion. So I'm gonna put my feed dogs down. Don't worry about this sooner. And the free motion foot is called number 46. It's the number 46 free motion quilting foot. I'm gonna put this to the side. And I'm just gonna show you a close up of this foot so you can see it. All right. So it's got a really nice plastic disc. It's got an opening here where the yarn goes through on the side and then it goes down. And what happens is as the needle goes up and down and you can only use straight stitch for this, so I'm gonna put on straight stitch, it, the yarn, the needle with the, the upper thread is gonna catch the yarn. So let's fill it up. I'm missing my little I lost my um, a thread inserter, but I'm gonna make another one because if you're not organized, then you better be handy and you better figure it out. All right, so you thread in the side. Sorry, Sarah. You're just gonna thread the side and then you thread right down the middle. Now this foot, can be used on just about any uh, new Bernina sewing machine. We don't have it for the old sewing machines, like Nancy's beautiful old 830. Um, but it is for most all of the other machines, but even better, you can put this on a Q20. You can put this on a Q24. It works on four series, five series, two series, three series, eight series. Oh, I could go on. Anyway, it's a great foot. So as you see, when I start to stitch, I'm gonna stitch just a couple of stitches to secure everything. All right, my yarn is now secured, being secured by my top thread. And as I move in a free motion technique, it's gonna catch the yarn. You want to leave some nice yarn slack here for it to um, be able to pull it in without tension. If it has tension, the yarn doesn't fill the hole as much and you may miss the yarn. I hope that helps. Um, so keep it really slack here on the desk. Oh, I'm going to make a peacock cover. Now, my stitches are not regulated. They're not um, staying the same because I'm kind of rushing to show you this um, because I'm not using the Bernina stitch regulator. I'm just using regular free motion. However, the stitches are all being hidden in the yarn. So it's the most forgiving free motion in the world because all those stitches are being hidden on the yarn, in the yarn. Now on the back, yeah, you're gonna see my long stitches, but you're gonna do the Adrian cheat where you match the thread on the back to the color of the backing and you won't um, see it as much. If you make a boo-boo and you miss a little bit of this, you can go back later and free motion over it or you can do what I do is just stitch some more yarn on top. Make a really nice thick line. Add a curly cue. I need to slacken this a bit. Um, this foot does come with a clip. You can add a clip to the side of your machine to kind of hold the yarn in place. I just find that's another place for me to get the yarn caught uh, because I'm maybe my technique is not great. Uh, a lot of people love that little folder. All right, you get the idea how easy that is. Yes, you can click uh, like so that I know that you like it. Cool, you can use any yarn that will fill that hole really nicely. So um, the this would be a bad choice, right? The number three pearl cotton would be a bad choice. It doesn't fill the hole completely. So it's gonna get missed. I'm only using straight stitch. I've gotta be able to nail it right in the middle of the hole. But Elmo here, this chenille, would be a great choice. It would fill up the hole and I would be able to catch it every time. 
Does that make sense? Yes, I see the likes, everybody. I make sense, finally. Okay, good. So that's couching. I hope you guys have tried it. And Suzanne says she loves it, so that's great. But um, you can definitely use this on the Q20 or the Q24 as well. The advantage to using it on those machines is that those stitches are regulated all the time because the regulators are in the table. And all your stitches look super duper duper even and even more professional, right? So that's really cool. So that is, um, that's couching. Now, of course, you can use the number 43 foot or I'm just going to raise this. There we go. You can, you have another option if you want to do couching in this manner. You can use the um, ruler foot. You can use the ruler foot and attach the um, couching inserts. So here's an advantage to this method. If you go with the couching inserts, you get three apertures of inserts. And it's on the packaging, it's like 2.5 millimeters and 1.8 millimeter and 1.5, something like that. It's right on the packaging, it's gone out of my head. Um, so you get kind of three choices and I could accommodate for different sizes of yarn, right? That makes, that's amazing. Ali, you definitely gotta try this on your Q20. I know you have one in the teak table, try it out. Um, whereas with the number 43, I've only got that one choice. I've only got the one aperture, the two millimeter which I've been using this for years and years and years and I absolutely love it. And I kind of know how to shop for yarn. Um, I know what's gonna fill it really nicely. Um, but this does give us more options with the ruler work foot. I hope that makes sense. Good stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna put that aside and I'm gonna show you the ruler foot. I think I'm gonna use the biggest aperture. And that's how hard it is to install. You just click it on and put those aside. And I need, I'm gonna go with, um, yeah, I'm gonna go with Elmo, good stuff. All right, so remember I said there were seven types of couching. So <coughs> this last little bit of couching is kind of encompassing three different types. This is free motion, free motion couching, either with the ruler foot or with number 43. I like them both. I have them both because I got to test them and make sure they they all work. I don't really have a favorite, I guess. Okay, so tips for using the couching inserts. I'm going to put this on the machine so you can see it. All right. Now that I've put the couching insert on this foot, see how much thicker I've made the foot? It's quite a bit thicker than it was originally. So you need to accommodate for that. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard to move the fabric. You're going to need to adjust the wheel a little bit up so that the fabric will move nicely on the quilt. Ask me how I know. You need to make a little bit of an adjustment there. And then this number 72 with the couching inserts works exactly like 43. Let's see if I can get it to work. There we go. Sewing live is really nerve-wracking. Ali, when we get together, maybe you can give me some tips on sewing live. It's really making me nervous sometimes. All right. So same thing, you just quilt like that. There goes Tickle Me Elmo. He looks great. Just trying to keep that loose thread out of the way. Oh yes. Okay, sorry, but couching is just my favorite thing to do. That and free motion. See how nice it is? It's so fun. Like my friend Diane says, you don't have to be great at every design. Okay, so look, I missed. Perfect. Do this for you. So what you can do is you can actually go back. I'm going to snip this thread real carefully. And I'm going to go back to where I was, and I can go over that. I can rethread my machine and just fix that up like it never happened. And I'm going to do that because I have one Two more techniques to show you. Where am I put the number 72 is so big I can't get my needle thread in there. All right, fixed. See, I knew something would go a little bit weird while sewing live, but honestly, I do this for you. I make these mistakes so that 
You guys know what to do when they happen to you. All right, I'm gonna see if I can get a recover. Oh yes. If that doesn't make you happy, I don't know what will. All right, so that's how you can, um, the reason is it's too tight, there we go. That's how you can recover if you happen to miss um, some of the stitches. And I still missed. Never a quitter. I'll get it. <laughs> there we go. Yes, nailed it. All right. So the other two techniques I wanted to tell you about was now that I've got this ruler work foot on and I've got the couching insert on, what does the word ruler work make you think of? Well, it makes me think about ruler work. So yes, of course, you could combine this now with your ruler. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, Sarah, I think I have to do it this way. You, my poor sample, my poor threaded sample. All right, so I can put my ruler on either side. Let's see what makes me happy today. Maybe this side. I just don't know. I'm going to try this. Now I'm doing ruler work and couching. You may applaud. That would be fine. You can send a like. Um, Right? Imagine the creative things you could do. This would be so fun. And actually on the Pinterest page, there's a really great project that my friend Heather did where she did this very thing where she combines um, uh, ruler work and couching and she makes a really nice, I think it's an iPad case. And I'm going to come back and make a nice little tulip design. Why? Because I can. And of course, if you're doing this on the Q20, it's all regulated. If your Bernina store has a Q20, check it out. Visit the store or um, borrow the Q20 to do your ruler work, rent it out. That would be amazing. Angie, thank you so much for the applause. You're amazing. Um, so that's another type of couching you can do. And the last one I wanted to mention is this sample here. I'll see if Sarah can focus in on this one. Um, if you, you can take either one of those couching feet and you can put it on your embroidery machine and you can couch and embroider at the exact same time. That's how I did these perfect feathers. They are not free motion feathers. I cannot do this, but I used my embroidery machine and it did it perfectly for me. And you can do the same thing with Qmatic. You could do it on a Q20 or Q24 on the frame with Qmatic and it would move the fabric exactly um, and you would get the perfect spiral or the perfect Greek key or whatever it is you're looking for and couched at the same time. I've tried it. It's amazing. It's so much fun. So try that out if you have one of those machines. You just need a design that's not very dense. It has to be pretty open and you don't want it to travel on itself too, too much. It gets pretty bulky, right? So I was just experimenting with this design. Um, I might go into software and change it. Our Bernina 8 software actually supports couching. You can take designs and set it up for couching, tell the machine that you're going to use the couching foot in that way. The couching foot won't hit the hoop or anything like that. All right, so I hope everybody learned a lot today about couching. I'm going to show you, leave you with a sample, and you can have a wonderful, wonderful day. Hopefully Sarah can see my sample. So this sample is about half a yard, and it took an hour to do. It's so much fun. So I hope you will try some couching on your machines and show us what you're doing. We have a Pinterest page available that has all kinds of great settings and projects that involve couching. So check that out and I'll add um, some more ebooks and I hope I've inspired you to give the art of couching a try. Have a great day. Enjoy the cloudy weather, stay in and, and um, so, bye.